Thank you for joining this webinar held by the World Alliance for Arts Education to celebrate International Arts Education Week. Now, please welcome Teresa Torres de Eca, representing the International Society for Education Through Art, INSEA, to introduce today's webinar host. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you everyone for coming here and for willing to share with us and to, to build more knowledge about art education, especially in those fields of humanitarian aid. I wish to welcome you all in the name of the Old Arts Alliance for Art Education. I would like uh, to thank Teresa and Jeff uh, from uh, the World, art, uh, uh, World Alliance uh, for Art Education for the help building this uh, webinar. I would like also to thank the three guest uh, speakers who have accepted uh, the invitation and also for their commitments. Thank you all for making, uh, for, uh, for making this possible. So I will uh, introduce uh, this webinar. So um, I'm Alban Buriel and I am a PhD candidate at the University of Quebec in Canada. I'm also a consultant for education in emergencies, uh, particularly in non-formal education in, and social work in Middle East. I'm a trainer on art approaches and art education in emergency settings. And also, uh, we are creating a working group on this special topic. So for the webinar agenda, so I will make an introduction, then Manon Lefleur will, will present uh, arts education and in MHPSS programs. Then Joël Alessandra will present post-war and comics. <laughs> and Lucy Pro will present Art Empowers. Then we will have a Q&A session. The goals of the webinar is to have a comprehensive understanding of the diversity of use of arts education in the humanitarian field. It's also to raise awareness of the potential of arts education in humanitarian context, and also to bring common reflection on the global development of this field of, pra of practice and research. So first of all, I should introduce about um, the effects of conflict and natural disaster on children and their family, of course. Uh, there, is, uh, there are 142 million of children worldwide who are growing up in armed conflict settings. It's a data from War Child. There are 70 million people worldwide who are displaced by armed conflict, half of whom are children. There are multiple vulnerability and suffering factors during direct exposure to conflict or disaster, displacement or insecure settlement or eventual return, and cumulative risks to their physical, emotional, and social development. The humanitarian field, it's between emergency and development. We talk, I will show you um, an illustration about that. But we can say that in 2005, there, there, is, there was a major humanitarian reform led by the OCHA, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, um, which developed the cluster approach and global partnership, including our fields of interest education, child protection, and psychosocial support. We can say that arts education in humanitarian field is also um, led by the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDG uh, 2030, and especially the goal for access to quality education, but also uh, 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 education who promotes well-being. About the cluster approach, I will go very quickly because it's not our main focus today. So there are different, um, different uh, cluster or sectors, health, logistics, nutrition, protection, shelters, water, sanitarization and hygiene, camp coordination and common management, early recovery, education, uh, emergency telecom communication, and food security. 
we can say that arts education or education through arts are 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 other um, place in education protection uh, and health but uh, we will see that uh, with Manon it's it, it can also be uh, in different level of all those, uh, those sectors about um, this um, this illustration too we can see different phases of the human of the humanitarian work there is a planification which is prevention, mitigation, preparedness, and the emergency, the disaster, the response, and the recovery, and then finally the reconstruction, which is uh, the development. Quickly again, the recognize the benefits in our context. A lot of a lot of researchers have worked in our context uh, to see how hard could um could have benefits um on on the children uh, uh themselves so um it's it, it could it could improve well-being of intervention participants it could also um to uh, make a better effective expression of emotion and thought in a singular way that also promotes a sense of belonging to a community, control and structures, help them reaffirm their identity and mobilizes their hope. Uh, it, it can reduce also the anxiety symptoms in children significantly reduced uh, so after arts education. Um, it um, can also um, develop the social emotional skills and the marked uh, improvement in verbal and artistic expression and emotional regulation. So we can say that arts education can be one of the answers uh, to uh, the humanitarian response in a holistic approach. So arts education and education through arts in the humanitarian program can be, um, can be uh, seen in, three, uh, in five pillars. First, there are the art-based mental health programs, which are more based on PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder uh, approach. The psychosocial support and art therapy programs, the non-formal education programs, the recreational programs, and the awareness and information programs. The artistic intervention, so a few words again to, um, to tell you that the scientific literature and gray literature testify to the use of all uh, artistic disciplines, but more often the visual arts, theater and music can also be dance. The NGOs organize artistic activities on a daily basis in their activities with children. Every day, you, when you go in a camp, you see a drawing somewhere, or, or painting, or, or, or a, a facilitator who are dancing uh, uh, with children. So there are arts everywhere. But not all practices of education in and through arts are inherently good. Goals, practices, processes, type of guidance are essential. So now it's time to welcome uh, our three guest speakers. Uh, we have deliberately ch chosen three con contrasting uh, contexts and profiles. So first, Manon Lefour, humanitarian worker for internal, uh, international NGOs, will present some activities related to an intervention in Central African Republic. Then Joel Alessandra, cartoonist in post-conflict Arias will present workshops he has conducted with young people, mainly on the African continent. And then Luz Pro, founder of and director of Arte Pro in Mexico, will give us the point of view of a national NGO and in particular of some of the interventions and practices carried out by her NGO. So Manon Lefour is a clinical psychologist, graduate from France in 2000, 
13 and had developed her, her practice abroad since. So she became a mental health specialist in humanitarian aid with a strategic and operational experience in multidisciplinary and multicultural environments as Republic of Congo, Iraq and Lebanon, working for different NGOs. Um, recently, she worked with Médecins du Monde, uh, MDM, in Central uh, African Republic for 15 months, uh, where she was in charge of implementing mental health and psychosocial support activities integrated to uh, health and gender-based violence program for uh, dis uh, displaced people and host communities. She is currently based in Amman, Jordan, looking for a new professional challenge and developing a new platform to discuss technology and expatriation named C and Mobility. Thank you, Alban, for the presentation. And I would like to thank you, the World Alliance for Arts Education, to organize this special week and to invite me today to discuss arts education in humanitarian ed and more specifically arts education in MHPSS programming. Uh, do you see my screen? Is it yes. all good? Okay, so let me. Um, so, as you are definitely aware, arts and education are related to mental health. Uh, but just to be sure we are all on the same page today, I just wanted to share the definition of WHO uh, about mental health, uh, defining by a state of well-being in which every individual realizes or her potential, can cope with normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. As you can see, WHO uh, defined mental health in 2001, so only 19 years ago. So we can say it's pretty new in the field. Um, humanitarian, humanitarian aid started a long time ago, taking its root in 1859 with the Solferino battle and expanded in 1970 uh, with the Biafra crisis. So mental health integrated to the humanitarian action uh, started in 2007 and be defined as any type of local or outside support that aims to protect or promote psychosocial well-being and or prevent and treat mental disorder. It is commonly named mental health and psychosocial support or MHPSS. Um, but what does that mean for people who are facing displaced crisis or displacement? How they can reach this definition of mental health when they are facing daily challenges like administration and legislation barriers, stigma and discrimination, disruption of habits, stressor, more important in terms of frequency and intensity. Uh, the histories unfortunately show that emergencies and displacement can be source of psychological and psychosocial suffering for individuals as well as for communities in a short term and as well as a long term. To, oh, oh my gosh. My screen is doing something weird, sorry for that. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so sorry for that. Um, so to regulate it and ensure quality of intervention, the Interagency Standard Committee developed guidelines on MHPSs based on six principles. As you can see, human rights and equity, participation, do no harm, building on available resources and capacities, integrated support system and multi-layered support. I would like to go a bit deeper with you on this pyramid of IASC. It's a multi-layered support that, that has four layers. At the base, you can see the basic service and security. When an emergency occurs, everyone needs to get access to basic services as health, shelters, food, water, and this kind of support, and they need security. Some people from that can reach resilience, but some other need a bit more support. And the second layer is a community and family support to, get, to help people to feel a bit better. The third layer is, is focused support, so that for the people who need more support, focused individually or in groups according to or of what they need. And the, it's mainly the psychosocial support activities, and they are implemented by staff trained and supervised by specialists. Finally, at the top of the pyramid, you have a small amount of the population who cannot get better with the three first layers, and they will need a specialized service implemented by psychologists and psychiatrists. As you can imagine, in some countries, it's pretty challenging. 
due to the lack of professional uh, working in this uh, area. As Alban mentioned, the humanitarian sector is based on the cluster approach and MHPSCs is directly related to health and protection. Uh, but we definitely work in collaboration with all of them to mainstream MHPSS and to develop like a, co a coordinate response when something happens. To come back to arts, because that's the main point of this webinar, so arts can be used as therapeutic tool, mainly in mental health, like we have a lot of things uh, able to be used, but as well as a tool to raise awareness. Uh, it's true that it's commonly used in MHPSS response, maybe not full, um, like link with guideline or whatever, but we do it as a, like we do it as we can, but it's great. Um, why arts have the um, arts and MHPSS? So arts plays a role in prevention and prevention of mental health by having an impact on social determinants of health, child development, health promoting behavior, uh, prevention of ill health and caregiving. As you can see, they are reducing stress, or, um, increased general self-perceived uh, well-being and stuff like that. Uh, it also has a role in management and tre treatment of mental illness, acute condition, neurodevelopmental and neurological disorder, non-communicable disease, and end-of-life care. So arts have a big role in mental health and it's important to be aware of it, to be able to use it according to the context. So from this, obs from this observation and according to the international guidelines that I already mentioned, uh, some agencies like IOM with the UN agency about migration develop a guideline having a chapter on focusing on arts in MHPSS programming and they revise the pyramid with activities according to the layers that are already discussed. So it's interesting to see how arts, arts and mental uh, MHPSS programming get together in this uh, guideline. So enough talking about theory, maybe Make take, uh, we can take like a contrived application. Uh, so I have spent my last year and a half in Central African Republic. CA uh, is in the middle of Africa, the green country on the map at the bottom of the diapo. Uh, it's a low income country experiencing civil war and humanitarian crisis since decades. Uh, most of the system like health, education, justice are really weak and CA is known for one of the highest maternal and infant mortality. So um, in CAR, mental health is really not well known uh, by communities. It's mainly commonly associated with craziness and witchcrafts, witchcraft. Most of the time, people suffering from mental illness or handicap are hidden or detained by communities or families, and there are a lot of stigma and stereotypes going around. As a MHPSS coordinator for Médecins du Monde in CAI, I was in charge to develop awareness and sensitization of mental health in the location we were working to ensure our acceptance of our staff for security, but also of our, activi of our activity. Uh, all our activity must be adapted to this specific cultural context and uh, be revised and work with a local team to be contextualized. So one of the parts was to raise awareness. Uh, we first uh, think about like producing flyers because most of the people are not able to read and they don't have a lot of material or electricity. So we started to develop this kind of project on flyers. Uh, we started to work with our staff, project managers, supervisors from the country to be sure the key message are adapted, but also with our partners and with the communities. Uh, like all the leaders we can find inside the communities, religious, women, or yours. And finally, we work with a local illustrator to make something with less reading and most like um, picturing. So after a few months of working, we had these results. It's in local languages, obviously. It's mainly saying that mental health is concerning all of us and you don't need to stay alone and you can come to discuss with a psychosocial worker according to principles like confidentiality, non-discrimination and security. Unfortunately, we encountered a lot of challenges and this project never finished, that we never printed out all the flyer because it was so expensive in this country. So it took us a lot of time 
uh, it was complicated to have all the skills and stuff to design this kind of materials. It was difficult to be sure that all the key messages was cultural adapted and we were really thinking about um, uh, misuse of materials and env in environmental impact. So we revised our strategy of awareness, we changed, our, we changed completely to do something different with always the same objective, raise awareness, but also advocate uh, for these specific activities on women's rights during International Day. We worked in collaboration with Médecins, du, uh, Médecins Sans Frontières, sorry, uh, to increase funding and to have more visibility to be together, to have more impact in, within the community. We decided to work on three sketches um, with theater troupe, one on sexual and reproductive health, more especially on the 40s that kill. It's pregnancy too soon, too late, too frequent, and too many. A second sketch on gender-based violence, and the last one on mental health and psychosocial uh, support. I will bring you with me on a Roman photo about all these adventures. So the first one is a theater troupe that we worked with. They are composed with one theater director and four actors. It's a part time jump for them. It's according to contracts, but they are used to work with INGO and uh, international organization. They are working inside Bangui, who is the capital of the, of the country, but also in the countryside. So this picture is like when, when we worked with them about all the key messages of what we wanted to do, and they came back a few times to show us the, the representation, and we revised them, we discussed about it to be sure that the message we wanted to share to the communities is well uh, transmitted. After that, um, so oh, I'm a bit too. So, in the same moment, we were planning about like the representation, yes, with local authorities to get access and to set up all the logistic parts uh, to be sure that all the activity can be implemented. Uh, for example, on this activity, it was eight representations have been made in eight communities in different uh, places in Bangui and in the suburb of Bangui. So, every representation starts by a short uh, local dance show. Uh, it's an habit to gather people because they are playing traditional music, they are dancing all together, mm -hmm. and it's a way for us to like um, um, create like dynamics and um, community feelings. So that's how it works. And after that, it was like the representation. The actor gets on the track, presents the different sketches one by one, and after that, um, MDM staff is opening a discussion with the population to ensure understanding of the key message, but as well to answer specific question. They also indicate our presence in some facilities to welcome every person who feels concerned by the thematics and who will need support, help, or more information. So I think it's a short video. I can show you a bit if it's working. So that's always going on. Uh, it's in lo local language, obviously, but like people are coming. You can see behind the celebrity VIP places with all the chair, and uh, they are like discussing and a lot of people. Behind the scene, so that's behind the scene when you can see communities gathering around. Um, you can see that people are getting like uh, ear stopped by, like the guy in front of with all the bottles. He was probably walking, but he stopped by to watch, to listen, and to discuss. Um, so that's a lot of people coming, and it's like in the middle of the village. We also use this kind of activities for biggest event organized by government, like the International Women Day in 2019. It's for us a, a real um, opportunity to advocate for women's rights. And um, on this specific occasion, we work closely with the Minister of Health, uh, who finally gave a speech leading to lightering adoption policies. So that's what you We show what, like data pictures and stuff like that to to advocate more at the ministry level or at least uh, at a not only communities level but like to make stuff change 
Finally, the last uh, thing we do with this theater too, because we already like them, is to sensitize communities, as I already told you, but it's uh, also sensitize our staff. It's important to work, like we are working with people from the country and they need to understand and to be aware about what we are doing. I'm not only officer, but like everyone from the finance to the logistic, uh, to understand what we are doing in the, pro in the program. Uh, it's also a good time, as you can see on the picture, a lot of people are smiling, laughing, discussing. Uh, it's a team that I'm working with like during 15 months. And we were like building teams and building cooperation during this kind of moment. It's also like a, a moment to share and to discuss. And so it's a long project it's an activity that we use it at different time for the women day but also like for the mental health day uh, we have a lot of challenges like uh, to be sure it's adapted to be sure that they don't transmit misinterpretation of the message we have challenges with local authorization and the population expectation uh, but definitely we noticed like, some increased awareness within the communities we are working with but also increase of frequentation within our health centers supported that's all for me, that's the resources that will be shared. And now I will just, uh, if you have any question, do not hesitate to mark them down and we'll discuss after the two presentations of my colleagues. <laughs> Joël Alessandra was born in Marseille in 1967. He graduated yes. from the Bull School in Paris in interior architecture. It was in Italy. Uh, it was in Italy that he published the, his first stories in the famous magazine Il Grifo. A frequent traveler, he has published several works directly inspired by his experience as art uh, director at the French Cultural Center in Djibouti from 1989 to 1991. He is the author of more than 30 comic books and travel diaries, mainly around themes related to the African continent. Joël Alessandra regularly travels abroad and more particularly in Africa for interventions around drawing and comics in cultural centers and French alliances. He also con collaborates in many collective albums, does uh, illustration for uh, advertising and communication and work on numerous web documentaries combining comics and reporting. So thank you, Joël. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Uh, I don't hear you, Alban. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> ah, I can go. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to. Uh, okay. Is it okay <laughs> like that? Perfect. Um, Thank you, Elban. Thank you, everybody, uh, having me on this uh, Zoom session. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I would like to apologize uh, about my uh, crap English. Sorry, I'm French. I'm deeply French, so <laughs> I will try to be my to do my best and uh, explain uh, what I'm doing um, uh, in the comic strip field in in Africa. So, for more than uh, ten years, uh, I've been working with the French embassies and cultural, cultural uh, action advisors to an intervene in uh, schools and high schools, mainly in Africa, uh, because I uh, used to work for the French Cultural Center. Uh, we call it uh, Alliance, uh, we call it uh, Institut Francais now um, in Djibouti. And uh, so I, I keep this uh, contact with every uh, network, uh, all the network of Alliance and uh, uh, Institut Francais around the world, especially in Africa. So I started to to travel uh, into uh, this uh, cultural center, uh, making the the children uh, drawing just for 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 fun. This intervention was well, truly interesting, um, enriching, even fascinating. But uh, for me, it was. Uh, a, a too small um, action uh, because I'm not uh, part of a program at all. Um, it's only personal initiatives all the time. Um, means that I produce a comic strip book and um, I make me uh, invited in this cultural center. And in exchange, I'm going uh, 
into schools and uh, on the field uh, to make the children drawing. But um, all the time, uh, usually it's a workshop of two hours maximum in schools. Uh, and it was seen to me in convincing on the benefits that these young people uh, could draw from it. So then I started to build more structured projects, even um, uh, all by myself uh, still, uh, with my contact in French institutes. Uh, I was able to work with the EF in Algeria, uh, for example, in Bangui. We all, uh, Manon talked about Bangui uh, uh, previously in the Central African Republic, uh, in Jamena, in Chad as well, and recently in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, we call it uh, Congo Kinshasa in, um, in French. Uh, in the Kivu, Kivu area, I don't know if you know where it is, uh, I'll show you. Yeah, a beautiful map and you see where the Algeria is, you, everybody knows, Chad, uh, uh, this, um, Kinshasa and uh, Central Africa uh, in Bangui. So uh, I would like to talk to you about a, a case um, of uh, DCR, of uh, Democratic Republic of Congo in Bukavu Kivu. Kivu is the, the area, um, you know, the big lakes in the, uh, the border is Rwanda and it's a really difficult area even now uh, because of the gorillas park and all the, uh, there's a lot of problem even with uh, the women, uh, they are abused. Uh, so anyway, uh, I wanted uh, three years ago to start uh, an edit editorial cooperation uh, project with the Institut Francais in Goma um, and in Bukavu. Uh, the idea was to recruit a group of 10 potential or early career authors and support them in the development of comics that would be printed and published. So you can see on the pictures, uh, they are really funny guys <laughs> and they really want to, to do something in their life which is really difficult is the, in these kind of uh, countries because there's no market for comic strip, uh, for books in general. Uh, people uh, don't read really, uh, as Manon said before, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, analphabetical uh, people uh, the, and the children are the, the, um, the population uh, who can trans, uh, transmit the messages we want to, to speak about. So um, we start, uh, the idea was to work uh, completely uh, immersed uh, with these guys, uh, to work in symbiosis for at least 10 days on the project, uh, because two hours <laughs> was too few. So uh, having lunch together, discuss exchanges, uh, be all day working in brainstorming, uh, screenwriting workshops, drawing workshops, but also discuss the storyboard, cutting, and the complete implementation of the book and create a real team. That was the purpose. Uh, if you have any question about all these terms, uh, after all, don't hesitate to, to ask. I mean, uh, storyboard, everything, it's technical uh, things uh, for comic strip. The same in the cinema. Uh, storyboard, I, I think everybody knows. Anyway. Uh, the idea was to work together and to teach them how to build a real product and uh, also uh, to um, have something, have a real job in their hands and something uh, that they can show in Europe to produce their own uh, books with a French or Belgian publisher because the market for comic strip is concentrated in uh, Belgium and France. Uh, few in Spain, not, not really, uh, the market is not big, uh, really small in the uh, United States with maybe with uh, other kind of comics, but the main uh, project, the main uh, market is in French and Belgium and um, uh, uh, Bukavu and Goma and uh, Congo is a French uh, speaking uh, country, so it's easier for them as well. So you can see some example of uh, what they what they can do. They are really, really, really talented, but they have no uh, technique. They have no um, way how to build the, the book. So my uh, my challenge and my job was to 
to uh, follow them in, in that. So um, we, we have uh, made the um, three books published in three years. Uh, the first one was uh, in French, Vers une école assainie, which is, um, we, we used to work with UNICEF on uh, different uh, subjects. Uh, I mean, uh, subject really important for the um, uh, school community and uh, the area. Uh, I mean, uh, it's written in French, I don't know in English. Uh, it's a comic strip about water and uh, hygiene. I don't know in, in English, hygiene. I think it's the same word <laughs> uh, in the um, uh, scholar uh, area. So uh, how to, to teach children uh, not to use just one cup for 100 uh, children but have uh, everyone uh, his own cup uh, wash their hands after being uh, to the toilets etc uh, etc et and the interesting thing is uh, we had uh, five or ten um, uh, subjects to explain with a, uh, a comic strip story and uh, i was here to um, to follow the, the guys who uh, written and drawing their stories. Uh, uh, how can I say that? Uh, the interesting thing is, uh, is a, a local story. The subject is uh, in the story, but the story is local uh, with their own words. And sometimes there are uh, some words in the local language, Linguala and, um, and Swahili. So uh, it's easier for the, the the people to read it, of course. Uh, so we published this uh, book in uh, 15,000 or 20,000 copies and, um, and uh, distributed in uh, all the schools around the country, which is uh, really, really uh, interesting. Um, the second uh, comic strip was uh, in BD pour les droits de l'homme, which is the human rights, another, another uh, touchy subject in this kind of country, but uh, it, it's interesting because it, it's, it's done with the, the government of Congo. They, they put money on the project uh, and it was a, a really interesting experience. Uh, the last one, uh, also, I'm um, sorry, also um, published in 15 or 20,000 copies and distributed in all the schools, uh, which is really, really good. Uh, the last one is L'homme qui répare les femmes. Um, it's about uh, Mukwege, Dr. Mukwege. Uh, I, I hope everybody knows him. It's the um, uh, Prix Nobel de la Paix, uh, 2000, uh, 2018. Uh, and this guy uh, is absolutely fantastic. I met him in, uh, in Bukavu, in his hospital. Uh, we have a long, really long discussion about his, uh, his work. Um, is a obstetrician, 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 gynecologist, and he's got an, a big hospital and uh, another uh, place close to the hospital, uh, which is the Fondation Panzi. Um, and to be uh, to explain that what what he's doing, uh, it's it's really sad because um, hundreds and hundreds of women. Uh, uh, we were abused uh, by uh, military people around the country, are completely uh, destroyed, I mean, psychologically and physically. So physically, um, Dr. Mukwege uh, helps them as a doctor. And then in the foundation, uh, the, this, this woman can have, um, uh, they learn uh, a job, they, they have uh, help with, uh, lawyers, etc, uh, etc. Et so it's a really uh, beautiful thing that is, is doing in his country um, against his own government. Uh, is it, it's really difficult for him because uh, even his, uh, uh, his wife and uh, her children uh, has been kidnapped. So, but he continues to go to uh, in deeply in his uh, role of, uh, for me, is a superhero, is uh, is some someone really fantastic. So um, he's really no um, known around the world, but in his co own country, not really uh, well known. So we decided to. 
to create a comic strip uh, explaining his life, uh, telling uh, what he's doing for everybody in, in his own country, uh, his fights, um, etc. So um, uh, the the government didn't help us, of course. Only uh, the uh, Swiss cooperation uh, and the French government. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, not French government, but uh, embassy. Sorry, I did a, a wrong. Uh, what did I do? Okay, wait. Yes. Um, to create a, a comics book, it's a bit uh, complicated. Um, I mean, to print it, especially in these countries, there's no uh, infrastructure. If you want to print a, a crap book, you can do it in Burundi. You can do it around, but not in uh, in. Um, in Democratic Republic of, Co of Congo, it's, it's a bit difficult. So we have to build all uh, the creation in the country and then I print it uh, in Europe and I bring it back to, to the country, which, which is a, a bit difficult with the, the customs, et cetera, but, well, but it's something we, we can do. So uh, I show you now some, some pictures of the, um, of the comic strip books. So you can see uh, on the left, I don't know if you see it, on the, on the left page, that's the subject. Uh, and on the right page, the story, including the subject of the UNICEF. Uh, this one is for uh, the, uh, the human rights. And on the left, the same uh, organization. On the left, uh, the definition of the article. And on the right, the local application uh, in the country. And that's the, the, the last one is the Mukwege uh, book, uh, more um, accurate. And uh, I think it's, it's something we can publish in, uh, in Europe uh, at the level of the, the quality of the artistic way, how they draw, how they, they, they wrote the, the story. It's, it's a high, uh, high level. So the purpose, uh, for me, it's, uh, I obtained what I was uh, uh, asked to do, uh, which is uh, they are uh, like professional now. Uh, the people uh, I work with uh, are, according to me, uh, at a really good level to, to work in Europe. So the purpose, it's, it's, uh, it's here. So Lucy Pro uh, is the founder and director of Arts Pro, Art Pro. Uh, after more than 10 years of entrepreneurship and six of, uh, and six of them in social impact, Lucy Pro creates unique platforms to connect uh, multidisciplinary talent for social good. Uh, she has worked in many European capitals, uh, is fluent in five languages and has studied in Potsdam, Germany. She has dedicated nearly two decades working together with artists and in 2014 she founded Arte Pro, uh, an arts-based uh, organization that shows strong scientific evidence of having the largest positive impact on children's mental uh, and emotional health. Most notably, Pro was the first uh, Mexican uh, panelist at the 2017 symposium of the AMAD, directed by Princess Caroline de Monaco, uh, where she talked about her work uh, with children born in prison. And in 2018, Arte Pro and its methodology were acknowledged by the uh, Y2Y World Bank Group. In 2019, she held a panel at the International Assembly of Educators Without Borders on Art and Education uh, as Social Intervention. So thank you, Luz. It's thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Alban and Teresa and everyone at the World Alliance for, um, for having me. Um, so what I created with a group of uh, professionals some six years ago, um, first I want to say that even though I'm the face of this uh, organization, the work uh, wasn't possible or couldn't have been possible without um, uh, the great collaboration of different professionals on two different sides. So on the first one, we have um, 
mental health specialists, uh, uh, neuro, uh, uh, specialists in neuroscience, child development and psychology. And then on the other side, um, we uh, invite uh, artists such as musicians, dancers, visual artists, designers and creatives to impart workshops to, to the children. Um, and so what we're creating with that is um, focusing it uh, uh, on, on the most, one of the most vulnerable parts of society. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the programs that we have done in Mexico since 2014. Um, so we focused, we've been focusing on children and youth. And just to give you a little bit of context um, uh, on the on vulnerable uh, children and youth um, facing abuse and neglect in Mexico, between 55 and 62 percent of, uh, of of children and high schoolers admit having suffered some kind of abuse. Um, over 4 million uh, 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 children live in extreme poverty in Mexico and, uh, and 2.5 million children and youth between the ages of 5 and 17 uh, uh, work. Um, immatriculation in elementary schools is almost 100%. However, there are still 6.1 million children between the ages of 3 and 17 that do, know, uh, do not go to school. So the first uh, group of uh, um, children uh, uh, and youth that we started working with um, six and a half years ago exactly was uh, young women, girls really, um, that had been physical and sexual abuse uh, victims. And so domestic abuse in Mexico, unfortunately, is something very common. It's one of the uh, 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 top countries in, in gender violence. Um, and the rates of, of abuse is super high, uh, as high as two out of three uh, uh, women in the country. Um, prostitution, regarding prostitution and human trafficking, over 20,000 children and youth are forced uh, uh, to sexual commerce, um, and 67% of women in downtown Mexico are affected from early childhood. Um, as well as early pregnancies, early and unwanted pregnancies. Uh, three per 10 women become mothers before they are 18. Actually, the uh, average age uh, of motherhood in Mexico is 14 uh, years old. And um, obviously more than half of these pregnancies are unwanted or um, uh, um, product of, of, of some kind of abuse. Um, and then also a very interesting group uh, uh, of children that we've been uh, working with is um, children born in prison. Unfortunately, in Mexico, these children are not recognized as vulnerable uh, group by uh, officially, which means that the government doesn't really provide any kind of um, program for, for them. Um, they have no food, they have no beds, they, they live in their mother's, uh, uh, they sleep in their mother's beds and they eat from their mother's food. Uh, um, there's no, um, there's no space for them, there's no school for them. Some children stay until they're six years old or sometimes even 12 years old in prison. It depends on the jurisdiction of the, of the, of the state and of the region in Mexico. Um, but so, uh, but so in this time during their whole development as children, they live in an environment permeated by drugs and violence and abuse that prevents obviously their, their full development. Um, there is uh, over, there is around 400% uh, uh, overpopulation in, in, in prison, which means that sometimes in a cell, meant for four or six people, you have over 10 people uh, uh, living. Um, and um, according to some surveys, over 80% of the prisoners today admit having uh, suffered some kind of neglect, violence, uh, abuse, or substance abuse um, during early childhood. Um, Something uh, very interesting is that the reality inside prisons violates 
uh, in every way the standard minimum rules for uh, the treatment of prisoners according to the US. So that's a little bit of the context um, in, uh, in, in Mexico. I heard uh, from Save the Children that more, more children die in Mexico than in Syria uh, uh, every day uh, uh, today. So even though you know, it's not an official conflict zone, our numbers um, really prove otherwise. Um, so how do we use arts and uh, mindfulness uh, to create a positive um, change? So for all the practitioners here today, I, um, I wanted to uh, go in depth into how we articulate our workshops and, uh, and, what's the, and what's the structure. So first of all, we have, um, we, have uh, we start with uh, 15 uh, to, to like 10, 15 minutes of a mindfulness exercise to get all the children uh, uh, together and everyone in the same, uh, in the same kind of uh, uh, page in, in terms of their receptiveness. Um, then uh, we proceed to do the introduction of the workshop, which is more the, the rather theoretical part of the workshop. So sometimes we, if it's an exhibition or if it's uh, related to, to the uh, discipline uh, of the artist, um, we do a, either a, um, an introduction, a presentation of the workshop, or uh, um, a presentation of, of the art uh, um, of, the, of, of the artist. Um, then we proceed to the creative activity that lasts about an hour. And so here you can see different examples of, uh, of uh, workshops that uh, we've had and we've really had uh, in six years of workshops, we, we've had uh, uh, so many different disciplines and so many different um, artists from all around the world, from emerging artists to more established. Uh, the important thing is that really they create um, uh, a link and a connection to, to, to the children and that they inspire them to, um, to dream uh, big, uh, because this is one of the this is one of the first things, unfortunately, that our children lose their capacity to dream. They look around and, and see the, their environments um, and understand very quickly that they're, 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 they have so many limitations. And so, so, so one of the things um, that we find is really important is to uh, remind them that they're, they are children and they um, and as such, they should dream uh, as big as they want to in order to become whoever they want to become uh, uh, later on in life. Um, and then just to close everything, um, we have another, uh, um, let's say, 10 minutes uh, mindful exercise to do a closure. And then we give them uh, a lunchbox before we take them back to their shelter homes or their communities or wherever uh, they currently live. So, uh, in total, that makes uh, every workshop like two and a half uh, uh, hours. And so, some of the results um, that we've um, that we've uh, 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 noticed and we measure um, the results is that we have mainly uh, an effect in three areas: so, in emotional health, uh, in cognitive skills, and social competences. Um, we also uh, uh, identify a decrease in, in violence, in bullying, uh, in criminal uh, uh, behavior, um, uh, addiction prevention, and other risk uh, uh, situations. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the results or the, how we uh, measure all these results, um, I'll be happy to, to, to answer any questions. Um, and so to, to give you just a few examples of how uh, this, this, um, the people that we work with have um, noticed the impact of what we do, I do want to say that um, we spend, like a big part of our work is the impact measurement. And so um, 
and so and so this is the acknowledgement that we receive from the world bank and this is the work also that um our group of uh, scientists uh, and health uh, um, mental health specialists and psychologists do um i didn't want to go into depth uh, uh, in that but i all the information uh, um you would like to have is, is very much available and um uh, i'll be uh, open for for your questions um in the q a afterwards um, but yeah, so back to the testimonials. Um, so I chose just a couple of testimonials. Uh, we have obviously so, so many uh, uh, from all the children that we've had uh, in the program, uh, meaning close to 800 in, uh, in these past six years. Um, but one, one testimonial that especially uh, draw our attention is uh, of this pedagogue. She works in one of the shelter homes for uh, children that are born in prison and so she um, here as you can see on the screen she describes that um, the, the the children in the in the um, in the shelter home um, would show aggressive uh, behavior uh, among them there was a lot of bullying there was a lot of uh, violence and um, and as soon as a couple of months after uh, Artipro starts working with these children, they start noticing changes. They start noticing they're more friendly, they're kinder, that they play more with their classmates, um, that they are more capable of teamwork and help each other with their homework, especially the, the um, uh, older ones uh, develop an awareness for the needs of the younger ones and so they help them with uh, things such as uh, homework um, or house chores. Um, they, uh, they, she says that they become much more artistic, meaning that they express themselves uh, uh, through art and they use really art as a, as, as a vehicle for their, for their expression. Um, she said that they are more curious to learn and they are more self-confident and, um, and their grades improve uh, uh, considerably. Um, so this, and then the second one is um, another uh, successful case. This is Laura. She, uh, we started working with her when she was around 13 years old. She uh, uh, has a, a son um, and she um, suffered a lot of uh, abuse and, and was forced into prostitution by uh, her parents at a very young age. And um, so here you can read what she, um, why she participated, because this is something very important. All of the workshops are completely um, uh, voluntary. So if one of the, if, if the children don't want to participate, we don't force them uh, at all. Um, she also says what she um, enjoys, what she enjoyed the most and what was an inspiration for her and um and what she uh takes from 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 these workshops to 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 her to her future life so aside of all the workshops and the 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 the, the regular program that Art, uh, Arte has we have a special program for um for children that wish to continue or to have uh, um uh, um, or that show uh, a greater interest in, in, in art. Because, and this is very important, we don't want all children to uh, become dancers and musicians. They can become whoever they want. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's not really important that they, um, that they, they continue creating art in their future lives if they don't want to. It's just to prove that art is uh, really one of the most powerful uh, um, vehicles for transformation and for self uh, uh, expression and, and self development and personal development and so um, and so but for children that do wish to pursue a more artistic career or a more artistic approach for their own in life um, we do help them with that and Laura is the perfect example so she uh, she's currently applying uh, to study at the, the School of, um, uh, uh, of Arts in Mexico City. Um, actually, she's already studying um, at that school. So we helped her finish high school. Um, we helped her 
put together a, um, a portfolio to, in order to apply to this, uh, to this school and we introduced her to different teachers um, uh, and professors uh, uh, um, at, the, at, the, at the School of Arts um, that helped her also understand uh, more about the scope of what she was going to study and ultimately um, enter uh, um, the school and, and, and study a, a career in, uh, in the arts. So that's our follow-up um, program. And um, this is it. So, <laughs> Our webinar is coming to an end. It was really great to have all of you here and uh, to see your energy, the work you are doing is really fantastic. And uh, I really appreciate. And well, I think as an art educator, and as, uh, I really think we need more of this in the world. We need people committed with the changing society, with changing small things. So thank you for all of you. And now I'm going to pass to the, the floor to Alban. Yes, a quick, a quick, 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 quick word to thank you again a lot. Uh, I hope uh, we will build uh, together. I mean, this this field of practice is everywhere in a, in the humanitarian field, and I hope we could we could do it like uh, more st stronger and um, and and to 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 be like. Um, um, formalized in a way and uh, thank you again I know that um, uh, it was a very gr great idea to have you so thank you again and I let um, Jeff to say the last word uh, um, and thank you for all of you who came uh, to, to hear us I forgot you but uh, I was uh, I was really happy to see that you were following uh, uh, following and attend this uh, this webinar so, and and I put my email address uh, but of course uh, we share the other the, the, the three uh, guest speakers uh, uh, email address too so don't hesitate I think we are here to share and uh, and we want to learn and to share I think it's we we share the same aim here so yeah Jeff I'll let you ending the webinar Thank you all for attending this webinar and thank you especially to all of our speakers. We wish you all a very happy International Arts Education Week and we will look forward to seeing you online throughout the week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.